happy Thursday, or as Courtney likes to call it, Friday Eve, Friday everybody. Eve. So glad you're with us here on Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. We're that much closer to the weekend, folks, even though it's summer. We still think about that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We sure do. Counting down the moments. By the way, I love your new accessory there. My new cuff, my new arm cuff. That's I got good. that today courtesy of our summer blood drive. They said I need to wear this for four hours. I didn't realize that when I planned my outfit. <laughs> but at least it kind of goes navy and red. Why so do you have to wear it that long? I guess because of the compression. That's what they told me I need to have it on. It's a little tight. Um, but I did donate blood today for uh, you know our summer blood drive here at KPRC Channel 2. Uh, I believe this is our 27th year. Did I hear that correct of the summer blood drive? I haven't been here that long, but that does sound correct. I know this I haven't has been either. an initiative. <laughs> but let's take a live look as we're talking about the summer blood drive because we do have the Gulf Coast Regional Blood Center uh, who is here. Their mobile unit is here on our premises of 8181 Southwest Freeway. We are inviting everyone to come in and donate blood today. It's going to help save a life. It's our summer blood drive. The need does not go away. Uh, 800 donations a day are needed in our community. The need certainly does not go away during the summer. In fact, it grows, and that is typically when donations drop. And you know, with every time you donate blood, you can save up to three lives. That's it, a pretty big deal. It really is. And I got to tell you, the process was painless, seamless. My actual donation part it was five minutes. That was it. Now, it depends on how quickly your, your blood is taken out and you squeeze the little thing and all of that. Some were sitting there a little bit longer, but it's, it's super easy and painless, you know? Did you watch a movie while you did it? Did they give you a cookie and all that? I chatted with Jose, my uh, blood drawer. I'm sure there's a better name for that. It's very nice. Well, we are gonna be checking back in with Jose, your blood drawer. Phlebotomist, and, uh, right? Phlebotomist, I believe yeah, is the okay. correct term. There you go. But we'll ch check back with the blood drive throughout today's But people show. can go online to sign up. They're going to be here until 3 o'clock today, so help us come out to the station. Uh, and you get all kinds of fun stuff, too. So we'll tell you about that in a couple hits it's coming up. It's a beautiful up. day to get outside yeah. as well. So, folks, if you've been gaining weight lately, it's not just because you drink cocktails while watching Houston Life, probably. <laughs> a new study shows that 90% of people actually point the finger at what? For their weight gain? Uh, I their don't know. job. Their job? Their job. So here's some Too of the reasons. Stressful? Well, stress, stress could be one of the reasons okay. why, but work is not stressful, right? No, not at all. So according to a new, sur new oh. survey of office workers, the average person has gained 12 pounds. That's a lot. Starting their, I, have, I have gained 12 pounds since starting this job. I'm not kidding. Really? And Beatrice, you have too? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm sucking it in right now. 12 pounds for sure. I think it's because of all the cooking segments on the show or maybe the cocktails or the office donuts. People do blame birthday cake and office donuts as one of the reasons for gaining the weight. Sitting all day long. Sitting all day long. Going out for lunch. Well, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't eat. We don't have lunch here. <laughs> this is our lunch. Uh, being too tired to exercise. Well, I can certainly relate to that. I, you know what, I will tell you, I, the exercising daily for me is the one way to clear the cobwebs. It's how I decompress, it's how I de-stress, I have to do it. Yeah, for us too. And I'm smiling because lately, Brandon and I do this new thing where we do push-ups. It gets the day going and I don't know, it, if you've had a late night out, roll out of bed, drop it, and do 50 push-ups in the morning. Yeah. I am wide awake, head clear. Good. And I've started skipping my morning cup of coffee. Why would you do that? Because if you don't need it, th why drink it if you don't need it? Oh, no. Mm -mm. Extra I caffeine is not great for you, My Cece. one cup a day is what I need. Uh, it's, I don't add anything else to it. I don't get the half calf frappuccino, whatever. I don't get that. It's just a regular cup of coffee. One a day. So last week I went to Starbucks one morning. It was Friday actually, and I was so excited because I was gonna splurge. I got a latte with coconut milk, cause you like those. I love them. But then I added a couple extra shots. I know the drink was gonna be like $65, right? Anytime you add anything to it at Starbucks, <laughs> it's so crazy expensive. But I thought it's Friday and I'm gonna spend $65 on that, on that one, one cup, cup of, of small coffee. Yes, six and ounces. I was so excited and I, I didn't, touched the coffee until I got to work. And I got to work and I thought, that, that latte tastes terrible. And it was just a regular cup of coffee. 
somehow at the drive-thru it got it all mixed up. It just didn't work? Isn't that a sad story? It's, yeah, it makes me real. You know what makes me even <laughs> sadder is the fact that you skip coffee. That's not good. I know. That's not good for Well, anybody. this morning I needed it. Our friend Shannon uh, is visiting from Chicago. Hi, Shannon. She's in the studio. Hi, local, Shannon. Local Shannon. We love her. Representing Chi-Town. Well, and she missed her flight last night. We had dinner. And we had a couple margaritas, and we thought, okay, it's a school night, but we can do this. And then turns out... What's a out, couple, ten? A couple margaritas. Well, <laughs> they were like the size of a the fish small bowl? bathtub, the right? The fishbowl margaritas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we've been so good lately. During the week, it's usually just a vodka soda. No calories. Well, yeah, still like 100 calories, right? 70 calories. But anyway, Shannon ended up missing her flight, coming back down to our house... And it wasn't her fault, by the way. I know, it was the I know. United Airlines debacle, right? We're still mad at them, aren't we? Well, but it's Terminal 1 to, you know, A Fly to out of B Terminal to C, B, but then... check in at C or A. Or, it's so confusing there at IH. Anyway, so Shannon comes over to our house, and what do we do? Continue Pop to the pour. Champagne, get the champagne, get the whatever. I know. So this morning, I am... Um, There's no sympathy for you <laughs> in this house at I'm all. dragging just a little bit this morning. You needed, like, a... A Whataburger breakfast taquito. I know. That's what you need on those kind of mornings. I know. The greasy so I've heard. food after the fact. Yeah. Well. The taquito is really good. Is it? With the picante sauce. Delish. I'm going to have to try that. Well, apparently there's this whole uh, morning versus night person. You know, all the time you hear about these studies that come out, and I know we talk about them on the show. Every who day. These? Who Who are they? Who are those people? <laughs> Who's doing these studies? So there's a study out of Belgium saying there are four types of people. You know, you've always heard, like, are you a morning person? Right. Are you an evening person? But now they're saying maybe there are four types of people. Morning people, who are most alert in the morning, obviously. Okay. Night owls, who are most alert at night. Shannon. And that would be you. Um, afternoon people, most alert from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or nappers, alert in the mornings and then crash around 11 a.m. <laughs> but then get a second burst of energy after 3 p.m., especially if they can take a nap. Well, then they must live in Europe if that's happening. Because that's not how, how, like, Spain, they, they operate. Yeah, they the operate afternoon. on that schedule. So when I was younger, I definitely was a night owl. And then my, my work schedule carried around that. So I worked the night beat and did all of that. And then I went to a morning show, which was such a weird transition for me, um, which it was harder to go to bed. Like, I don't know what you would call that because I was just up at weird hours. And, um, and now, I don't know, I love a good 15 minute napper, but I'm up like normal days at like 5 a.m. Yeah. And then I like to take like a 15 minute nap. But let me tell you something, if I'm home and it's like 8.30, I'm ready. I'm ready for bed. Oh, we are, too. We are completely... After eight margaritas. Well, well okay, last Everybody's night... Everybody's sleeping after those. We didn't have eight margaritas. It, it was not that many. It, <laughs> Shannon, by the way, always... We didn't have eight margaritas. <laughs> She's... Shannon's... You can't hear her, I know, but she's saying we did not have eight. We just had one the size of a bathtub. <laughs> But the fishbowl. What we will get ready for bed at like eight o'clock, and we will go up and go to bed. I've never at eight o'clock. You're sleeping. Oh, sometimes yes. I as as you get older and older, I feel like that's the gift you give yourself to, yourself. to go to bed early. I've never figured out the nap thing though, because sometimes in the afternoon at the office, I'm at my desk and starting to nod off. You're a two or three o'clocker, right? That's when it really hits me, and you either feel energized from a nap, or it makes you even more tired. Well, that's right? because you got to hit the kind of the good spot of napping. You can't go longer than like, I think the study, one of these studies out there, they studied it. And it was something like if you nap longer than 30 minutes, it's, it sort of does the opposite of it energizing. It makes you more tired. Yeah, it makes I've you more tired. I've heard 20 minutes or two hours. But doesn't it take a while for caffeine to hit you? Because Not at all. No, I think it takes 20 minutes. Oh, I don't, it doesn't affect me, though, is what I'm saying. I think the science. But here's a strategy some people might use. You take a sip of coffee or you drink a coffee and then you take your 20 minute power nap and then it takes 20 minutes for that caffeine to kick in. So after the power nap, after 20 minutes, your caffeine's kicked in, you're ready for your second wind. Huh. But I, if my nap happens, it's later in the day, like a 15 minute, do you know what I'm saying? So I'm not drinking coffee that late in yeah, the day. Yeah, I know. Well, but it doesn't affect me either. Like, do you drink coffee after dinner or do you ever, you know, if you're out or anything, do you ever drink like an espresso or something? Mm -mm. Uh, I don't n normally do either, but if I do, or like Orlando can drink coffee all day long, and it just doesn't affect him. He loves it. Well, he's built up a tolerance, though. Probably. 
Yeah. If he quit cold turkey for like a week. I have no idea why week. I'm even bringing this up. <laughs> why, what are we talking about? Can we go back to the fishbowl margaritas? I'm never around for all this fun stuff. <laughs> fishbowl margaritas were really good. By the way, Shannon's from Chicago. Courtney, that's where you're from. I know. Did you, did you guys know each other? Did you go to school together or no? We didn't. We passed by each other on the street once. We did. We really? did. And we kind of went yeah. like, mm, hey, girl. We yeah, we're like, you. gym suit Thursdays. Hi. Hi. Yep. Shannon forever, like 10 years in L.A. So it's so nice to have you here in the studio. And I promise this afternoon we're not going to be drinking. We're just going to have lunch. Well, then I'll drink with you. Liar. There is actually a really cool place. When we went uh, last week to the Galleria, to the FOMO factory, yes. Shannon had messaged me and she was like, this place is so cool, we have to go there. Colorful photos. It's kind of a trend that these places are popping right. up. And today we're going to get a really cool look at a different version of that. It's just as colorful. Uh, we're going to tell you about it coming up in a little bit. And also our friend from the Children's Museum, they are here. What to expect at their action-packed summer, including Minion Madness. What? That's our control room and our director, Chris. Oh, no. Oh, no. This could be interesting. If we suddenly go to black and commercial break, <laughs> there may be a slight technical Wait, issue. which one's the Minion? Which one's Chris? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Chris has better hair, I think. Yeah, he does. Oh. Also, this is huge for us here at Houston Life. American Ninja Warriors. You know, we've seen so many of the contestants just wow audiences. And today, before Monday's Oklahoma City qualifiers, Madeline McNeil, Jody Avila, and Jody's son Brandon, they're going to be in studio. And, uh, I always love seeing our local Houstonians killing it on that show. It's such a great show. They have incredible strength and can't wait to chat with them coming up. But first, looking for a sweet way to spend your weekend. We always are. And this is just what we were chatting yeah. about right uh, a couple moments ago. Houston Life correspondent Lauren Kelly. She's inside a candy-coated wonderland with a ton of marshmallows. Lauren, get your selfie oh, yeah. stick ready. Oh, yeah. You see this? You see this? I am in my childhood dream right now. Candytopia is the newest Instagrammable entire place off of I-10. We're in the Marquee Center, and I'm looking for the co-owner. Her name is Jackie Sorkin, and I, I know I'm supposed to find her around here somewhere, but I, I think she's here. Somebody <laughs> Jackie is the candy queen, and Hi, she guys. brought her dreams to life. Hi, Jackie. Hi. Thank you for having us. Thank you guys for being here. Tell us about Candytopia. So, yeah, Candytopia is really just... You know, my crazy childhood dream come true. Um, loved Willy Wonka when I was a kid. Yeah. Was always a creative. Uh, really loved playing with candy, and it yeah. became my form of artistry later in life. And uh, timing, patience, persistence. Yeah. Yep. Let the whole world think you're crazy. <laughs> and you're not crazy. I, you know, nine years ago, I was like this so, pregnant lady doing my candy in my garage. You're like, she's crazy. cravings, right? Well, yeah. you've got seven locations now. Houston right. is lucky number seven. Yes. And there are so many spots. Absolutely. In this facility, and you have a couple dedicated to Houston. Absolutely. I want to start with the Houston Astros hat. Right. It may fit Orbit. It's big enough for right. the Orbit mascot. What is this made out of? Right. Is that so, jelly beans? Right. This is so. This is our candy art. This stuff is done by hand, one by one by one. So meticulous. These are some hard candy bones, like okay. sweet tarts. Yep. We've got gummy bears, jelly beans, Amazing. licorice. This is really the manipulation of candy. <laughs> we take all kinds of candy and cut it and stretch okay. and pull it to create this To create stuff. that. It's beautiful. I just yeah. want to take a look. Yeah. She has candy topians, kind of yes, like the Wonka workers. They're Oompa Loompas, but look at the right. visuals here. This is a force, I love a this. force graphic. You look at our donut, Hi, camera. you take the high-res <laughs> photo, and it comes right to your phone. So, Jackie, one of the most popular rooms Yes. in your locations is the marshmallow room. Absolutely. Can we see it? It's a huge pool. Absolutely. This tub is our full of marshmallows. Look yes. at this. Oh our my gosh. <laughs> Everyone loves the marshmallow pit. So anybody can jump in, right? They Absolutely. just have to take their shoes off. Well, Absolutely. that's what I'm going to do. You jump Jackie, right in. Thank you so much for having us. You're we welcome. have so much more from Candytopia, but are you ready for take this? Take a big jump. Well, I'm going to watch out for the Candytopians. Ah! <laughs> They're actually shooting marshmallows as well. It looks guys. so great. And Lauren, those are real marshmallows, right? You could eat one of those if you wanted to. For sure. No, 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 you're not going to be sticky. Don't eat these marshmallows, but they sure are fun to play in. It looks like so much fun. Okay, well, don't get lost under all of those 
marshmallows. I will not. We will I'll be checking <laughs> back in with Lauren a little later on in today's show. Super fun. Okay, guys, next, what it's like to raise a little ninja. Jody Avila from American Ninja Warrior and his son Brandon will share with us their joined passion okay. when we come back. So cool. Ah, Monday's episode of American Ninja Warrior is your chance to see an all-star lineup of contestants from our area. And two of the local ninjas who got the call to be on season 11 are with us today. Madeline McNeil, Jody Avila, and his son, Brandon Avila, who is seven years old. And Brandon, I understand you're already a ninja athlete yourself? Yes, I'm, I'm a ninja athlete myself. And, and you practice in your backyard, huh? Uh, I practice in, in our backyard with my dad. Oh, how so amazing. Cool. Father and son. How, so we saw the video of you watching your dad compete on the show. What was that like for you to see him going through that? It was amazing to watch my dad uh, go on American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> so cool. Dad, what a proud moment, right? Yeah, it's, it's super. It's just so much fun. I, I, I'm, I'm privileged to be able to just get to, to do what I love with him, and he loves it just as much as I do, so it's, a, it's a, just a really cool time in my life right now. And Madeline, for you, where did your road begin with Ninja Warrior? Because obviously you're all very athletic, but the things that you guys do on this show, it's just Test staggering. Of yeah. Test of strength. I can't imagine doing it in private, but <laughs> doing it with all of these people watching. Yes. It sounds like it's a lot of mental yeah, competition. It's as a well. whole nother element having a live audience there. Um, I started as a gymnast, I have a gymnastics background, and so I actually went to a taping of American Ninja Warrior, and uh -huh. I was like, I want to do that one day. So that became a goal for myself. And the first time you ran the course, how did it go? It was really fun. Um, it was really fun to be a rookie um, because I didn't have any expectations for myself. I just wanted to go out there and I just wanted to kill it. And so I just had the time in my life the first time I competed. Now, both of you guys, give us an idea. Are you able to see, I know that you train and you don't know what they're gonna throw at you, right? Correct. But when it's your turn to go, are you? Are the contestants given any kind of guidelines, or you literally are watching it sort of unfold in front of you? We have no information when we go over there. We just basically arrive on the course, and you see this 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 incredible spectrum that they have. I mean, they have lights everywhere. It's, right. it's, it's incredible actually being there live. And then you just, you know, you go over rules, and as you're going over rules, that's your first time looking at the course and, mm -hmm. and uh, at these obstacles. You don't get to practice them, you don't get to try them. It's Nothing. Just, Nothing. No. So literally, that first run, when we see it on TV, is your first run. Yeah, yeah, we have not touched the obstacles before we touch them on the live show. And that's so interesting to me, because the jumping, the starting, the grabbing the bars, you have no idea what it's like until you're there in that moment. Yes, that's yeah. a whole other element. I, you don't know what anything's gonna feel like the first time you grab it. Okay, so talk to us about training then, because if you don't know which obstacles you will be facing on the course, how do you effectively train to ensure you're ready to handle them? Well, you kind of just train a little bit of everything. You got to do agility stuff for the balance obstacles. You obviously want to be strong upper body. Um, you want to work a lot of different kind of grip techniques and different, you know, you have to know how to fly and catch stuff in the air. So it's just bunch of different stuff that you, you got to do. You just try to be as well-rounded as you can be and you right. hope for the best. You hope that you've prepared when you get to run the course. And Brandon, you're doing a great job on this obstacle course. Is this video of your backyard that we're seeing right now? Yes, this is. A, that's a video of me and my dad training. It looks like you're doing it very well. It's so <laughs> awesome. And that's not easy, man, the pull-ups and moving those bars around. What I have to say, Madeline and uh, Jody, this is so cool, is that in the audience, of course, this is a great family-friendly show, right? You get to work out with your son. But what a way to really shine a spotlight on being healthy, working out, really gaining momentum, if you will, and, and having your son and littles watching you guys do all of this, right? And it's Absolutely. so positive. Absolutely. It's just, it's, it's so much fun. And it's just like, it's, it's, you know, trying to stay fit. It's not even really in my mind. It's just, we're just having fun doing it. And, you know, that's just a really good byproduct of trying to, you know, of, of having fun with your family. It's just, you know, yeah. we, we stay fit in the process. I think that's a good point, what he was bringing up. I've always said that fitness can be fun. And it just, it's a good testament to how fun it can be. So, and Madeline, with a background in gymnastics and now having competed on American Ninja Warrior, what is next for you? 
Um, I've been getting into CrossFit lately, so yes. I'm a person, yeah, I'm a person that I just love to achieve something new. I like to learn new skills, so every day for me is a learning process, and so I hope to compete next season. That would be amazing. I think that's kind of all what we hope for, but right. um, yeah, I just kind of take things as I go, and I learn new skills, and that's really fun for me. I Such like seeing progress. Positive attitude, all of you. <laughs> it's so nice. And Brandon, what about you, buddy? Are you hoping one day to be on that same Ninja Warrior stage? One day, I hope that I could, that I could compete on American Ninja Warrior like my dad. I'm sure you oh, absolutely I'm sure that's can coming. do that. <laughs> that is so great. And here's your. You also have a two-year-old, right? I do have a two-year-old. Yeah, he's a uh, Christian. He's he's he's. He's a baby. No, actually, he's, he's, he's three years old now. But, yeah, we, we got him hanging around on stuff, too. But he's he's not quite as fearless as this one was at that age. But, but right. he's, he's, he's coming, too. So it, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. By the way, of course, uh, we're big fans of American Ninja Warrior here at KPRC Channel 2 because it airs on Channel 2. Monday night's episode, we're going to see both of you competing. Yes, and a bunch of other Houston Ninjas as well. You're going to yeah. see uh, Josh Salinas, Daniel Gill. Yeah. yeah, the kid. Uh, Barclay Nick Stockett. Fordney, Barclay yeah. Stockett. Uh, David, David Wright, Wright. so many yeah, people. They've all been on the show. Yes, yeah. so fun. A ton of fun. just super strong ninjas from Houston, and it's it's going to be a really fun episode. We're super proud of you guys. Thanks so much Thank for coming you. in. Thank you so much yeah, for having us. Please tell the rest of the gang we say hi. A reminder, that show does air Monday night starting at 7 p.m. right here on Channel 2. That's right. Up next, guys, a preview of all the fun events happening at the Action Pack Summer at the Children's Museum of Houston. It's all about minions. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you're still looking for ways to keep the kids entertained this summer, the Children's Museum of Houston is the perfect staycation. Absolutely. Here to highlight the different activities happening there this season for all ages. We'd like to say hi to Letty Luna and Gretchen Schmaltz and some of the Minion friends who are also, they were in the control room a little earlier. They're on set with us, hopefully not raising any problems. Yeah, you can't see them right now. I but, know. They're uh, coming. They're here. They're over there in the living Ladies, room. welcome. Always a fun time at the Children's Museum, especially yes. at summer, Lenny. Yeah, so the Children's Museum Children's Museum of Houston is celebrating Action Pack Summer. Um, we are open seven days a week now, so we know that families are looking for things to do, and we've got plenty of things lined up. And no matter what your kid might be into, they can be a spy, they can be a pirate. There are all kinds of options for every kid, right? Yes, so basically what we're telling kids is to get in on the action, so they're becoming the star of their own movie. Uh, we do have some things like uh, animation, so if you want to learn the behind the scenes of making a movie, you can come and check it out, but we also have movie sets, so you can dress up and play with us. I love that. Well, let's also talk about one of our favorite movies, of course. You're celebrating Minion Madness with a fan celebration. Yes, so we're having the Minions and Gru come out to the museum this Saturday, uh, so they'll be there <laughs> from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., but we've <laughs> also got some improv classes, cool. uh, so definitely come check it out. And you also have a comedian, Bruce Manners in Comedy Sports, uh, which yes. is Houston's improv interactive kind of comedy scene. Exactly. So that's the workshop part of it. So if you want to come in and uh, check oh, out your okay. improv skills, then we have workshops, I think, from 11 to 4, too. And, uh, sorry, I'm so distracted They're by so these They're so cute. <laughs> it's so great. You guys should come back every single day. And kids can meet not just the minions, but also is the character Gru from yes. Despicable Me? Yeah, Gru and his crew. Oh, so, right. yeah, so all three of them will be there. Okay, so the lab, this is something that a lot of kids are really into because it's hands-on. You learn a little bit about science as well. Right. Gretchen, you want to take right. it away? Absolutely. So we definitely want to invite children and their families to attend our BASF Kids Lab. So it's a series of 30 chemistry labs that we're teaching over the course of the summer. So they started on Memorial Day, and the last lab will be taught on Labor Day in September. Uh, we cover topics like DNA extraction, which we're going to do in just a second. Oh. Uh, this coming Monday, we're building batteries out of lemons. Um, we do a little bit of uh, forensic science, uh, chromatography, um, topsoil investigation. So the topics are very diverse. Right. So there's something for everyone. I love this. And this is also just giving kids an insight into what labs really go through, what you do in a lab. And this is very serious business here. We are doing a banana DNA extraction. Oh, that's dear. right. That's right. So okay. if we want to get started, um, I'll invite you guys to put on a pair of safety glasses. One yes. of you will need the gloves Oops, for the messy bit. Okay. And there's here. a pair right the there gloves. that you can use. 
Okay. All right. And so if you'll take a banana here and you'll want to peel it. So, uh, Derek, if you want to peel the banana and throw it into this bag for us. I'll open the bag. Why, there thank you, you so Teamwork. much. Teamwork. Teamwork. That would be good. All right. And I'm going to peel the banana from the back because that's the way chimps do it. Nice technique. All right. Okay, so, and just okay. place it in the bag? Put it in the bag. Wait, and oh, the peel or the banana? The banana, yeah. You can oh, break okay. it in half, put it in the bag. And what we want to do is break up the cell walls and the nuclear membrane of the banana cells. Okay. okay. Um, so that we can get the DNA out, so that we can visualize it. So you want to put in about half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. And about half a teaspoon of just clear liquid dish soap, nothing fancy. Oh. And then we're gonna dissolve all of that in about half a cup of water. So okay. where it gets a little smoothie-like. And if you're just joining us now on Houston Life, don't be alarmed, this is not a cooking segment. <laughs> this is not, this is a banana DNA extraction. And that's right, and so in order to help the soap break up the lipids or okay. the fats and the proteins, you wanna really smash that banana up. You want to get most of the solid content into a mush. These are very fresh bananas. That's right. <laughs> and so it's a little easier if you do use the old ones that you're about to throw out. Okay. Um, and so out here. while I this so is happening, to see yeah. Where this is going, by yeah. The way, Gretchen. So we're using the soap, like I said, to break up the lipids and the proteins of the cell walls and the nuclear membranes, and the salt will help the DNA fragments coagulate or stick together okay. so that we can visualize them in the test tube. Okay. So since this should sit for about four or five minutes, I've got one ready to go for us. So here's the other TV. messy bit. All okay. Right. So you guys are going to take that banana mush and you're going to separate the filtrate by pouring it through this little kind of system we've got here with a sieve and a funnel. Okay. All right. And so you can stop there for just a second and we'll get a little bit coming out of the bottom. Okay. Kind of mix that up. It is kind of a nasty looking mix. <laughs> Sorry. All right, and then pour a little bit more, okay, just little, to make sure we're oh. getting more than just the soap. Okay. All right, and you can go ahead and close that up. All and right. We'll move this back over here. Save okay. that for later when I'm hungry. All right, and we will put this off to the side here. Okay. Our little waste things, and you need to grab a test tube, and if you'll pour in about half, halfway full of your banana into filtrate the test tube? into the test tube, so oh. you're getting. Uh, DNA bits and you're getting some of the banana but most of the chunks we've filtered out. Okay. And as a last step, and here Courtney you can do this part, we've okay. got some isopropanol. You want to tilt the DNA test tube, let's do it uh, to get a little bit less, tilt the test tube at a 45. Okay. And drop the alcohol just down the side. Keep going. And you want to make a layer, squeeze the whole thing in there. And more, this more, lab, more, more. by the way, <clears throat> Gretchen, this is happening every Monday. Every the Monday, there are two sessions. One is at 11 and one is at 12.30. There you go. Okay. Okay, and we get a, a double phase here. So we get our DNA, which is going to rise out of the filtrate into the alcohol. We call it falling out of solution. And it'll look like little yeah. cotton strings kind of rising up there and separating. You can see it. Yeah, yeah. you totally can see it. Yeah. So you can do this with with a lot of different uh, fruits and vegetables. Strawberries are another good one. Um, they're octoploid, so they have even more DNA per cell. Gretchen, so. I'm a believer. I was a little skeptical. <laughs> didn't know where you were going with that. There's the info on your screen every Monday this summer, as we mentioned, 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m., included with your admission price. The website to visit is cmhouston.org, or you can call 713-522-1138. Thanks so much to Letty and Gretchen and to our little minions. Our minions. Guys, thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> Still so, ahead, guys, Lauren Kelly takes us back inside Candytopia, the sweetest Instagram spot in town. And coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, cool down with a refreshing summer cocktail. Drinks that are low in sugar but high in flavor. We will be right back. Okay, time now to head back to Candyland, Candytopia, in fact. Our HL correspondent, Lauren Kelly, has been hanging out there this That's morning. That's right. Lauren, are you getting some good selfies out there? I hope so. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's too bad. I think she's lost in the marshmallows. That was Paul saying, no, no, no not happening. Not happening. Oh, dear. Well, okay, we're going to check back in with Lauren in just a little while. It looks like so much fun. But right now, let's take a quick break. 
I am inside the mobile blood unit. I've already done it today. It only takes about five minutes. I am joined with Joshua Buckley, Gulf Coast Regional Blood Center, along with Jerry Shorten, who's a blood recipient. We're going to get to your story in just a second. Joshua, this is a busy time for you guys. It's always a busy time. Tell me what the need is in our backyard for blood donations. We need 800 donations a day in, need, in order to meet all the needs of the patients and the 170 healthcare facilities that we provide products to. It's super Super easy. It's painless. I, it literally, my blood draw took five minutes today. That was it. And this is our 27th year at KPRC doing the summer blood drive. This really does make a difference, right? It really does because during the summer months, we see donations decline. You know, kids are out of school, everybody's on vacation, but that need for 800 donations is constant. So this is a great time for us to educate all of the KPRC viewers to come out, donate it. We need it every day. This is where you can do it right here at our studio. 8181 Southwest Freeway, super easy to get to. As journalists, we like to put faces to the stories that we put on TV, and this is one way that we're going to do it today. Jerry Shorten, you're a blood recipient. Take me to the back to the time that you were a recipient, that you needed this blood. Absolutely. So, actually, I was born with two uh, uh, diagnoses. So, one is skids, and then another one is being awesome. But I want to come back, so. <laughs> Being awesome. <laughs> but, you are awesome. But let, let me tell you about skids. Yeah. So when people hear skids and they're like, what is that? And skids is a fear combined immune deficiency. So basically, I was born with no uh, no immune system. Uh, I was born with no B cells, T cells, and really low uh, natural killer cells. Um, my life doesn't just really start with me. It goes way back whenever my two brothers was alive. Um, I had an older brother named uh, Dedrick and an older brother named Wesley. They both had the same condition and they both had passed away. Um, my older brother passed away at seven months and he was actually in the actual bubble. And I'm not for sure you heard of David the Bubble Boy, yes, right? Yes. You have? Okay, so he was actually right across the hall from David the Bubble Boy. Um, so it was right in the 70s. And my mom had my mom and dad had Wesley was my second brother. He 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 passed away at the age of nine months, and he didn't make it either. Then my mom and dad had my sister named Noelle, and she was perfect, healthy baby. And then they had me. And then when they had me, um, my sister was actually my bone marrow uh, transplant at two and a half years old, and I'm here today. Unbelievable. I, you are making the hair stand up on the back of my neck. I have to tell you what an incredible story. Thank you so much for sharing that. And this is what this is all about, guys. Come down and see if you can be a donor today. It's very easy. Joshua, the process doesn't take long at all, even if somebody doesn't have a donate uh, a spot today. Yeah, no, absolutely. You can just uh, go online. If you can't make it out to the station today, the blood drive with KPRC runs all the way through the 17th. So you can go online, find a location, sign up for an appointment and come donate and help people like Jerry here. I mean, Jerry still takes medicine that's made from blood products. So your donations are helping keep Jerry alive. What is so incredible, and when you see people, we're in the mobile unit, There, there's donors in here. I did it today, and- um, Thank you. Uh, well, no, I, I don't even need the thank you. It was my pleasure to do it. Yes. And and I love my armband, it matches my outfit today. <laughs> um, but when you see these people in here, just coming in, complete strangers to mm -hmm. you, knowing what this does to you mm -hmm. and your life and your family, what do you say to these donors? What would I wanna, you like to say to them? I wanna tell the donors thank you, because you don't understand Understand how important the blood donations are. Um, when I was two weeks old, I had blood transfusion to help me keep me alive because they did so many tests to try to figure out what is kids, what is this going on yeah. with this young man. And so many other people have lost their lives and able to, for me to, to live the legacy. I used to be really scared to tell the story. I was very ashamed of telling the story and now I feel like it's bigger than me. Um, it's for my future future. Absolutely, you're not alone and you should celebrate who you are as a person and what this has done for you. And that's the whole reason why you're here. Yes, thank you. Oh thank my you. gosh, what a great what a great story, you guys. This is so incredible. The, um, the mobile unit will be here today until three o'clock. Come to 8181 Southwest Freeway, KPRC. Also, a few extra things, some some coupons and T-shirts and stuff. I got to send it back to the studio, but you get swag when you donate blood, people. Hey. Yeah, hey. swag. Hey.
Thank you. <laughs> Great uh, job. Courtney, it was so thank nice you so much for that. You. What an incredible thank story, you. by the way. And a reminder that just one blood donation can save three lives. So get in here if you haven't already scheduled your appointment. Still a lot of fun ahead on Houston Life. Don't go away. We'll be right back. If wrinkles, crow's feet, and under-eye bags are keeping you from feeling your best, our next guest has a solution. Lifestyle expert Scott DeFalco is here to explain how Plexiderm promises to reduce those pesky signs of aging. I'm just going to sit here and listen, Scott. I promise. This is a promise I will keep. Courtney, get out your OMG emojis because what you and your viewers are about to witness is going to blow your mind. But i got to be honest, Courtney, I'm a little emotional today. Why? Thank you for asking. Because for the first time in five years as being the only male spokesperson for Plexiderm. Yes. I am not introducing Richie Bags as our model. You are not? I am not. What happened? I don't know. He got popular. He's looking good. He's in high demand. He's moved on to greener pastures. But get excited, Courtney, because I brought along our new model, Sweet Georgine, I call her. All right. I can't wait to look at Sweet Georgine. There she is right there. She's the nicest lady you will ever want to meet. And she came in with the problem areas around her eyes with the crow's feet and around her mouth with the laugh lines. We sped this up to 20 seconds, but it was about a minute and a half. We put on Plexiderm's Rapid Reduction Serum. Look what it did for her. And like I said, get out that OMG emoji because it is amazing. I mean, as we are looking at this time lapse, the before and the after, as we roll through this, those deep set wrinkles on the before picture mm -hmm. completely disappear. disappear. This is unbelievable. Yes. Did she use the entire tube of Plexiderm? <laughs> no, less is more of Plexiderm. Just a little bit what goes a long way with Plexiderm, and we've upped our game, Courtney. Okay. We have new ingredients in our serum. We have a real potent anti-aging peptide called acetyl hexapeptide 8. In the skincare world, it's known as Botox in a jar. Okay. So minus the needle again. But we've also added the magic buzzword that people love, collagen. Yes. Yes, so collagen. So when you add peptides in collagen, you're adding moisture and elasticity. Here it is with before and afters. And like you said, it's all the key signs of aging, not just one area. The forehead lines, the crow's feet, those under eye bags. And I, the part I love the most is loose skin under the neck. People have been frustrated for years on yeah. how to get rid of that because it really looks bad with aging. Plexiderm is working on that as well. You know, Scott, I'm going to be honest with you. If this stuff is <laughs> not going to burn my face <laughs> off, right. I'm going to use it after looking at the before and after pictures. And yeah. this is basically an invisible layer that's tightening and smoothing the skin yes, and a is. little goes a long way. Yes, it does. Just In fact, I'll show you right here okay. because it's such a small amount you need. I'll put some on the back of your hand and literally for your problem area, what I just put on your hand, that's, that's all it. you need. Now rub it into your skin. You're okay. going to feel it, it goes right in real very nice, smooth. very smooth, very yeah. velvety. And that's because of the ingredients, Courtney. And we're still deriving silicates from the shell rock you have there on the table. But over time, as your peptides and your collagen degrade, that's why people get the, um, like the cracks and the dry skin and right. the sags in the bags. So when you rub the formula in, the molecules in the formula, as it's drying, and you could probably start to feel it on your hand right now, those are weaving together to tighten the problem areas, also raising those crevices to give you a nice, smooth-looking surface. And again, pulling that loose skin. You know, people call it turkey neck. I hate that term. I, I do, too. <laughs> I, I do. do too. But that's how they know it, and you're seeing it on your screen. It's working on that as well. It is a game changer. What I think is so fantastic, you're right. I'm, I'm feeling this. It's already dry on the finger, on my hand. It's yep. already going to work. It's not sticky. Yep. And this is so great because normally when we talk about anti-aging, we're always talking about the face. Mm -hmm. And you've brought up this point twice now about the neck. Yeah. This is super important. If everybody tells your age, they say it's the back of your hands and your neck, your neck. is what the true age is. It's true. And we're seeing this here. This is there unbelievable. Is right yeah, that's Maria right there. I was in the room when we shot all these, and I'm telling you, as amazing as it is on your screen, I've told you this, Courtney, to yeah. be there in person and witness this, it really, it, it blows your mind. You can't believe what you're seeing, but it is not magic. It's not Photoshopped. It is real. And when we put this on the face or the neck, we mm -hmm. want to do this kind of in the morning, right, before we yeah. do our makeup routine. If you're a woman, wearing this. Yeah, if you want to use makeup, you know, it's the number one question I get yeah. from the ladies. A uh, real simple process, you know, before you're going to work in the morning or even going out at night, put Plexiderm on a clean, dry face, let it settle for about 10 minutes, Courtney, then your makeup is normal. Or you could take uh, one part of your liquid concealer or foundation, mix it with two parts of the Plexiderm Rapid Reduction Serum. Okay. You know, every makeup's different, so you might have to adjust those settings, but spread that evenly over your face and then let it sit for about 10 minutes. And here's the greatest thing about this serum, not just how quickly it works, how long it last you're getting up to 10 hours now with the results it's just incredible it really is well let's hear from uh john and veronica who are using this product now and love it plexiderm was so easy to use a little dab will do me i looked in the mirror and i said wow 
I look like I'm back in college. There's no price for that. Plexiderm, you got a, you got a partner for life. I could have 20 hours of sleep and people always say, oh, you look tired, <laughs> which I'm 58, expect gravity to hit. So when I saw Plexiderm and I saw the advertisement, I definitely had reservations when I first came in to use the product. And looking in the mirror, I could definitely say it's a winner. And I think every woman in America would want to use it, whether they're young. And I've had bags from the time I was 28 years old to 58. And uh, I'll wait till I'm 75 to get the whole facelift. But maybe with Plexiderm, I won't need it. It really is a winner when you're seeing uh, the before and after photos, even that time lapse when you speed it up and actually see this That's product incredible. working. We mentioned specifically about putting it on before makeup, but yeah. makeup artists are really loving this as well. Yeah, and we have Sandy here who's worked with a lot of professionals out in Hollywood and all over the country, and let's see what she had to say. Hi guys, my name is Sandy Marinese. I'm a professional hair and makeup artist, and one of the number one question that I always get in my chair is, can you make me look younger? So we had a few people that we applied it to, and some of them, at first, I was like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. And I was so impressed how fast, efficient, and how well it really worked. Now I could really say to people, yes, I can make you look younger. Oh, uh, we love that. Yeah. Results last for hours. Mm -hmm. This works in minutes. I know we've hooked people, Scott. We have How do we get in topical, on this? No injections. All you got to do is call that 1-800 number on your screen, Courtney. It's 1-800-923-7063 or go to plexiderm.com. You know I brought the biggest special we've ever had because I love Houston Life so much. And your viewers, 50% off plus free shipping. There's the number again on your screen or go to plexiderm.com. You got to get in on it. Again, drastically reduces the look of fine line and wrinkles. And again, that number to call, one 800 923-7063. Scott, always great to see you. Know. <laughs> Keeping us hug. young hug it out. and firm. I love it. Thanks so much. <laughs> we'll be right back. Earlier, uh, I think we lost our Houston Life correspondent, Lauren Kelly, she's in swimming. all those marshmallows. She's been out at Candytopia. Oh, she made it. You're alive, Lauren. Where are you now? Oh, hey. I am here. I'm in the confetti. Candytopia room, and I was warned that this room is going to love confetti. I'm going to make my way over to Jackie Sorkin. She is the co-founder of Candytopia. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jackie, this room is I on know. another level. <laughs> Don't swallow it. <laughs> so you guys are obsessed with pigs in here, right? We <laughs> love pigs. We love the pig. Thing. Okay. We love pig butt. Okay, so I know we're. What's, what's going to be doing these yes. confetti? Like yes. over here by the choo choos. Absolutely. Let's look at this one. Oh, hi. Here. Look at this. Look at this. Ready? So, this, yes. This is where it comes from. This is correct. <laughs> look. <laughs> yep. And that's just the pig but tube. But that's the, the, it's a pig tube. That's where the confetti is coming right. from. So, right. let's go back over here and see more pigs where there's more candy. There's candy in every room, you guys. This is off of I 10, the Marquee Center. Tickets online. You have to book your tickets before you come in. Look at this. There's candy in this corner, but you thought the confetti was no, done. It's Jackie, it's right. not it's done. Never done. done. It's Ready? never done. So if so we stand great photo right moment. here, right. a perfect photo moment. A great but boomerang or slow mo okay. photo. Okay. Seven. So we're ready. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you just got tooted on. <laughs> Here. It's right. such a great time. Right. It's perfect for social media. It's perfect for the kids of all ages, the adult kids, yes. your best friends. And you're going to be in town for how long? So we will be here for a limited engagement. Okay. Um, tickets are on sale now, candytopia.com. Okay. We have sold out nearly every single market. Okay. Um, so we encourage people to get their tickets quickly. Yes. You should um, do that. It's going to sell out. Right. And it's just so much fun. Come <laughs> lose your mind. And lose your voice from Come screaming. Come be a kid again. Come get some confetti. Come get Jackie Sorkin, thank you so much. You. We'll be at Candytopia a lot Wonderful. of times. All right, over oh, oh. to Let's get the confetti out. Ready? Oh, the car wash. So once you had, oh. once you're oh. all confettied up, here's the car wash. Oh. Watch it's this. my fiance. 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 <laughs> you're J-Lo. Back to you, Sorkin. Uh. Yeah.
Yes. I was just going to ask how you're going to get yes. that confetti out. That is perfect. Uh, work it. Gosh, I wish I had long hair. Uh, Lauren, thank you so much. We need Very a fan. fun. More info, by the way, is online at our website, HoustonLife.tv. All right, guys, coming up on tomorrow's show, summer cocktails that are low in sugar, registered dietitian Mary Ellen Phipps. She's back on the show talking about sparkling pina colada and a juicy orange margarita. Yum. Also, Father's Day feels will have the story behind the dad and son duo dominating the Houston food scene, Boss Cat Kitchen and Libations. Oh, I love those guys. Absolutely. It's a Such fun a spot to hang absolutely. out. Absolutely. So fun on this Friday Eve. It was fun. I'm so curious about that marshmallow pool and now the confetti. Don't forget to donate. That's true. Yes, for life. Three. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for joining us.